Hello YouTube, this is Ghost Jason. I hope all is well on your end. Welcome back to Sunville Amusement Park here at Planet Coaster. Working on the antique card ride for the park. And for the first time, it's not a roller coaster. It is a track ride. Something meant for the whole family and has been for the park since the very beginning. And it is working around the Pyaresta track, and what I thought about it is this ride has been here ever since the park was open, but when Pyaresta took over, they had to retrack the entire thing. They made it just a little bit smaller, but not by much. Basically where the queue line is, is they took up like 10 or 20% of uh, the vintage car ride, so I decided to just work away around that. So it is going underneath the Pyresta lift hill and it goes around into this little garden area and where it's underneath the uh, the track is where I'm gonna add like a little tunnel where that's something that they added to hide as much of the uh, boomerang track as possible but right now I'm just modifying both the station and the track just so that it can get the proper turns that I do want in it. And as you can see, the autocomplete tool is just a little bit chaotic, but you know what? That's what it is. Sometimes it is chaotic and you have to just go in there yourself and fix it all. I thought this turn was a little bit too wide, so I did whatever I could to modify it to the best of my ability. And this turn will have a little extra little feature to it as part of a, a garden-like atmosphere. But before I do that, I decided to smooth as much of the turns as I possibly could, making sure it's not too jagged. Adding six cars into the mix, I think that would be a healthy amount. Now I did try to add a pond here, but I thought the pond was way too small. We ultimately got rid of that in a later update, but I added this on a day, I think the same day that I made Pyresta, so decided to remove that pond and made a bigger pond just on over the back. You can probably see that right there. Sometimes I like to go in the, into the park and just experiment, you know? See if this is better off, maybe remove this, maybe add that, and adding the pond all the way in the back is probably the best call that I could have made to the antique cars building the station right now. I thought these archways would probably make the best type of station that is made for this park. Adding the roofing now, decided to extend the roofing out. So it's working on a seven foot grid. That's the best way that you can make it. Honestly, it looks better than that. Just than making like a box with a two 14 square building. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what to say right now. But you know what? That's totally what this is. It's mainly improvisation and just a time lapse of me building these attractions. Completing the roof right now. And then I tried to find the same building material that I used for the arches to put the walls of the roof. Just like that the two meter piece and then we top it all off. I ultimately do raise the roof of this building just so I can add a ceiling to the station but that will come in a little bit later but right now I am building the sign for the antique cars. I'm just going to add two signs one that it's on the uh, tilted part of the roof and one in the middle of the building just like that. And I tried to find the best sign that I could, but all these Western signs, they don't really match up. And I thought this would be the most ideal fit, but uh, you see that frame, it stays blue. So, which is a real shame because I would have picked that sign if that was not the case. But ultimately I found one of these narrow signs. I think that was the sign that I chose right there that you were seeing right now. That's the sign that I chose. And now I, ch I am putting the sign on the roof, of course, 
making sure that everything is perfectly aligned. And uh, there's not really a name to it right now, it's just Antique Cars. But if you guys do have a name for the Antique Cars, feel free to leave it down in the comment section below. But I am now going to be adding some supports to the roof so the sign can hold onto the building. Try to see if I can find any like thinner pieces of wood, but all the thinner pieces would just lay flat against onto the roof, except for this piece, but I am glad that I found this one. And when I put on the angle tool, it just did not want to stay flat, so I had to uh, make sure it was flat myself. I mean, it was flat on the uh, roof, but I wanted it at a perfect 90 degree angle, if you know what I'm saying. Adding horizontal sections so it can support properly. Try to fiddle around with some wood pieces, but this was the ultimate wood choice. And uh, there you go. There is the support for the sign. As I'm trying to type antique cars, I'm not the best spelling. Like I question what letters go in certain words, but yeah, there you go, antique cars. And I do the same thing on over here, antique cars. There you go, looking really, really good. And all that red as well. Adding some supports to the main building. Decided to go for this white and red look as well. Lining up the supports properly with the building. Fiddling around with the uh, turning tool. And yeah, that's... That's mostly what this building is going to be looking like, minus uh, the fact that I'm going to be adding some lighting throughout to make sure that our guests can see properly when it's nighttime and they want to go for a ride at night. I do like these supports, though. I think these are the same supports that I use for the, the main... The, the gateway. The main gateway to the amusement park. In just a matter of minutes, though, we're going to be going into probably one of my favorite parts of this build, which is the landscaping. And I've watched about, like, an hour or so of antique car YouTube videos, trying to get, like, true inspiration of how am I going to make this area look beautiful. And uh, the antique cars in real life, they don't really have, like, much character to them. It's mainly just an outdoor space. But watching the ones on Planet Coaster, I got a lot more inspiration on Planet Coaster than uh, in the real world. So, yeah, here we go. Adding some trees. There's a tree over there. There's a tree over there. We add a birch, an oak, an ash. And then we get down over to this area, which is the straightaway. And I ultimately decided to do get a topiary archway and put it at the beginning of the straightaway and then I I'm trying to find the light arch right there and we're gonna just simply fill the straightaway with these arch lights because I think they look really really nice and they give off this really cool effect especially at night when you're riding down riding through down with uh, the lights and all sorts making sure that it's all even up. And also, I want to give an update on the Planet Coaster series. Going forward, there's going to be one Planet, Epi Planet Coaster episode a week, and then we're going to go back to our normal schedule of other gaming videos like Dead by Daylight and Splatoon 3 and stuff like that. Just because I want to get back in the grind, I normally I just started Planet Coaster as just to take a break from Dead by Daylight, but with the update coming in tomorrow by the time uh, this video comes out. It'll be time for me to get back into Dead by Daylight and I'm gonna be grinding through the new characters because there's three characters instead of two. So, and if you guys wanna watch me grind through Dead by Daylight, uh, feel free to follow me on my Twitch channel, Ghost Chase. Planet Coaster is going to be mainly a YouTube series. I'm not gonna be doing any Planet Coaster stuff on Twitch, but other games, you can follow me on Twitch, and I'll greatly appreciate it. 
getting into the rock work now, adding some bushes around the rock. I thought this would be a great idea. And I think it looked really good, but the rock just felt kind of short. So I did raise it a little bit, added some bushes nearby. Decided to add some flowers in the front just to give us some visual appeal. Really like these kind of flowers as well. And right now I am going to add a fountain around this roundabout, is what I like to call it, the roundabout. Adding the fountain in, trying to find the right pond to put it in. And then add the fountain structure as well. We also add the jester on top of the fountain structure because I thought he fit best. Also because he has like a tiny base to him, just holding him on by his feet. I thought that would be best fit. I thought this king would work, but no, nope, we're going with the jester. And I thought it would position snap, but it did not. So I had to do my best to manually line him up to the base. Adding some more landscaping around. I ultimately replaced these flowers with the uh, sunflower, but you're probably not going to see in the POV because I went back in and changed that. And then we add these red bushes all around that side. And then these, uh, what I like to call petunia flower, or the, the petunia flower bushes all around as well as these red flower bushes. I think those red flower bushes are like my favorite plants in the game. Here we go with more rock work, adding more rock work all around. Adding some more life into the area. We're heading to the back area right now. We're in a position where we're more comfortable going around the back. Adding some nice little flowers right over there. I thought these were a little bit too small, but you know what? I'm not really too I'm not really complaining too much about it. And then I found the lily pads and thought these would be a great fit for the pond. In the pond we're going to be adding some fountains as well. But right now we're getting into the trees, adding more trees. Tree over there, tree over there. I mean, trees are like the simplest way to landscape, right? Trying my best to cover up Pyrusta as well. Adding flowers around one of the rocks. Making sure they stay on the ground as well. And by the way, guys, if y'all want to come up with name suggestions for the antique cars right now, I'm just going to call it the antique cars. Feel free to leave it down in the comments below. I'm also looking for names for the mock launch coaster that will be added later, as well as in the interactive shooting dark ride that will be in a later episode. Maybe the next one, if not that, the one after that, because I am debating whether or not to add the flume, the uh, blog flume, or the interactive shooting dark ride after this episode. And right now I am working on what I'm calling the shack. And the shack is mainly going to be the tunnel that separates the front area from the back and both ways going in and out are going to be the main gateway to the back garden. And with this shack, I decided to put the signs that are in a uh, Planko into inside the shack. So you're going to see the Chief Beef sign, the Cosmic Cow sign, the Ghostbusters sign, all the signs that I can find, and I'm just going to cram them into this little shack. And I'm also going to be editing the track so that way both ways of the cars can go through the shack. And just like that. Decide to delete both sides so that way both sides can fit through the shack moving the shack around a little bit also I did add the wrong parts of the wood to the to the roof as well as one of the archways I'm gonna fix that in a little bit later in the video Let me 
making sure the turn is at a good pace for me to straighten up the shack as well as connect to the main road heading back on once again now the road leaving the back garden heading back to the shack is getting fixed up resizing everything making sure all the angles work perfectly And just like that, perfect. Now make sure the shack is all lined up. Just like that. And then I go in and I actually remove these pieces because they're the wrong type of wood. I copied the wood arch from the front and then I went to go find the right wood and put the roof tiling in. And our shack will be complete. All that's left is the decoration. And like I said earlier, adding uh, we're gonna be adding signs into the shack. So they would have added the shack during uh, the construction of Pyresta, but so it's gonna be looking a little bit tacky. And that's the whole point. I found these uh these theme maker toolkit like grimy bits to it and I thought that would look great because they didn't really take care of this spot too much but it does add a little bit of character to the shack I do say so maybe if the wood was a little bit of a different color maybe they would have seen it a little bit better but it definitely adds character and I do like that especially on the outside there you go now fiddling around, decided to get to the signs right away. We're gonna put the signs first up. We added the Ghostbusters sign on into the building. The Planko sign was a bit too big. Added this sci-fi sign. This arrow would point to the exit. Yeah, just sign, sign, signs. All around, found the Gulpy sign. Thought that looked good. There's also some pieces that like stick out, but was not going to be able to fit in the building. Found the chief beef sign. Of course, gotta add chief beef. Gotta put that right there. Added the pizza sign. And also, um, when I was, after I saw the pizza sign, that gave me some inspiration to build a pizza restaurant in the park. So right next to the Starbucks, I added something I like to call the pizza window. And it was going to be a restaurant at first, but I thought the pizza window would be the best fit. And the main inspiration of the pizza window was something that I saw at Disney's Boardwalk Resort. They had a pizza window. It's literally just like a small building with a window in it, and you order your pizza from there. So that was the main inspiration of that, but we called it Luigi's Pizza Window. And it's literally right next to the Starbucks. It uses the same building. And I think I liked it. You know, you gotta add you gotta add a pizza restaurant in your amusement park. Decided to add some traffic signs. I found that sign, and I'm also gonna use that as sign as an arrow, pointing to hey, you gotta go into the shack. Speed limit sign. Ultimately changed that so the colors match. I thought a cheeky tiki cheeky sign would work, but it did not. Some more street signs because they fit the best some arrow signs as well i also found the street fox coffee sign at that there and we're good with the pizza sign again and i wanted to put cosmic cow right on top because i thought it looked great kind of like taxidermy as well there you go cosmic cow right in front and then i decided to find the just ribbon sign there you go. So, Monsieur Fritz, some fries. And then there's the Street Fox Coffee. I'm trying my best to work with the camera here. The camera does not want to work with me. Or I don't want to work with the camera, you know. Move the sign. And then we add Street Fox. 
found that arrow once again because I thought that would work great. And then we work on this arrow sign pointing in the direction of, hey, you got to go into the shack. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. <laughs> yeah, and I think the shack is pretty much complete at this point. There's also some landscaping that we have to do around the building. So at this point on, I am going to be taking my break and I will see you guys in just a matter of minutes, okay? I'll see you soon.
all right guys i hope y'all enjoyed me building the antique cars if you guys have name suggestions for the antique cars or any type of suggestions you want to see in sunbelt amusement park feel free to let it down in the comments below again there will be another planet coaster episode next monday this is going to be a once a week series for now on and I think the next episode, we're either going to be working on the log flume or the interactive shooting dark ride. You'll find out next week. <laughs> Hope you all had a fantastic day. And if y'all do like what you see, hit the like button, subscribe down below, and go follow me on my Twitch channel where we do other games three times a week. Hope you guys have a fantastic week, and I'll see you all soon. Take care. See you soon. Bye.